New York Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis. Uh, Congresswoman joining us from the Capitol, thank you so much for coming on. You, you led a bipartisan effort urging the State Department to use all resources possible to help get Americans from Israel that could be hostage at this time. Um, what more needs to be done in your opinion? Are you, are you satisfied with the job that maybe you've heard behind closed doors? What can you share with us at this time, Congresswoman? No, I'm not satisfied with the response we've seen from the administration to, t to date. Uh, look, this, we're on the fifth day of this, and we still have not sent any military planes or chartered any commercial aircrafts to get our citizens home. Uh, there are many citizens from my district and across the country who are in Israel would like to return. Unfortunately, a lot of the commercial flights are being canceled. Um, and many other countries, uh, Germany, Poland, Mexico, Canada, they have sent either military aircrafts or they've chartered commercial airlines to be able to get those citizens home. And I can't understand why the United States of America has not yet done this. And so my colleagues and I are pressuring uh, this administration to take swift action to direct the Department of State and the Department of Defense to work collectively to do this and make sure that we get every American citizen who wants to return home as soon as possible. We've also seen you, Congresswoman, criticize the United Nations. Believe we have an ex post to share with our viewers here. Uh, you wrote, This is why the United Nations is useless. Security Council held an emergency meeting but took zero action. Not even a statement condemning Hamas's attacks. The UN was created after World War II and it can't even condemn the deadliest day for Jews since the Holocaust. Uh, Congresswoman, did you want to expand on that comment there? Uh, just how you're viewing the UN's response at this time? Yeah, to think that the United Nations was created uh, following the Holocaust, uh, and this is the worst carnage we've seen of Jewish people since that time, and that the UN Security Council cannot issue a statement, a simple statement, condemning Hamas and the atrocities of their terrorist activity is, is just unconscionable to me. And it goes to a bigger issue of that we have the wrong people sitting on the Security Council, sitting on the Human Rights Council. I mean, you have Russia, you have China, and, and, and on the Human Rights Council, you have Iran, you have Cuba, Venezuela the most egregious actors when it comes to human rights. Um, and, and that is what's wrong with the United Nations, is that the, the people who are on these various commissions are the ones who are the worst violators. And so I am very concerned about, um, about the future of the United Nations. I don't understand why we even have a United Nations if they're going to not be vocal when we need them to take a stand or to pass a resolution condemning these type of horrific savagery we're seeing. And so that's why I believe that President Trump had done the right thing by removing the United States from uh, the, the Human Rights Council, for example. This administration put us back in there, and their justification is, look, we need to work to elect better members, and that is why we need to have a seat at the table. But since for the past two years, I haven't seen any better members becoming uh, part sure. of those commissions, and so I, I just don't understand what we're doing there. I uh, want to close with this. Uh, there's concern in terms of passing resolutions, legislation with the House of Representatives, as you know. Uh, yesterday, uh, your colleagues uh, seemingly nominating Steve Scalise behind closed doors for speaker again. But this never came to fruition. I believe you backed Jim Jordan, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but however, this never came to a vote yesterday. This never happened. Um, there's a little bit of confusion. We're, we're learning the House is going to convene at noon. Will there be a vote? Ultimately, what is happening with the speakership in your mind? Look, I support Jim Jordan, uh, and I'm fine with Steve Scalise if that's where the conference wants to go. I think either will be a good speaker. Uh, the, the issue is someone has to get the 217, and uh, that is the reason why I support Jim Jordan, because I believe he is the one ultimately who can get everyone together on the same page so we can move forward. So we'll have conference shortly, and we'll see exactly where we're at, how many individuals are holding out, refusing to vote for Scalise or another, another member. And we'll have to see, you know, who can get the 217 that we can rally around, because, look, we need to get back to work. The world is looking to the United States for leadership at this moment. We are facing another shutdown in roughly 30 days. Uh, 
we need to move forward and do the work of the American people and, of course, be leaders in the, the leaders that we are in the world. And we can't do that if we don't have a speaker. And so while I support Jim Jordan, Jim Jordan has now said that he will nominate Steve Scalise on the floor. And you know what? That's good enough for me. I will join him then in supporting Steve Scalise. But if Steve Scalise still can't get to the 217, then we may have to look elsewhere. We remember, of course, what happened when Kevin McCarthy initially was in the process, the votes that were being tabulated to become speaker. It took a number of rounds of voting. Uh, we'll watch and see what happens today. Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis, thank you so much for taking the time with us. Thank you. Our extended coverage.